In other words, it's, it's, that's another book somewhere about. I'd like to see the book about how different artists even made it financially through the years. Everybody oh, yeah. has a different story. Somebody gets inherited, some people are washing dishes, some people. It's very interesting. But when in the 70s, in the mid 70s, is where I think I started teaching. Oh, okay. People asked me, and I said, You can't teach this. But then I would collect their names and start these workshops. And that's where I. Did I do Yang Yang with you? That's when I first just created this little piece called Yang Yang, which is a series of rhythmic things. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, I did that. But you know what? I, for years, then I started to teach and, and work in the offices. And then in 1980, I think I stopped working in the offices. And I was teaching freelance, still freelance, you know. Then I went to Cornish for 20 years. I did. They didn't pay so much, but it was a wonderful, wonderful college. Okay. And Peacock's there, was there, yes, the yeah. Priester's still there, okay. sure. Jerry Grinelli, the, the, you know, yeah. uh, great faculty, still Jim Knapp, great people there, still a good scene. But I always in the back of my mind would say, you know, I'm just going to teach until. Right. And then about ten years ago I realized I will always teach. There's something about it that I love. I teach on my own terms. I would actually rather, I mean, I teach in institutions, but I, you know, I'd rather, I like being in and out. I like now going out and doing master classes. I love that. Yeah. And I help because a lot of times, uh, uh, Sheila does this, I mean, that's the, and I learn from Sheila Jordan. Right. So interesting, you know, you learn from people who are more experienced than you. That's the way, that's the lineage, you know. But I love it, and it is connected with my music, you know. Uh, it's. It's uh, it's not a chore, and I'm no, you know, I, I'm honest about it. But I love. Uh, I can't teach. You don't actually teach it. What you do is you make environments with for learning, and you kind of help when I'm and help young people know what to do next. What to work on. Right. I make up. You know, it's like sometimes they just don't. So another creative process no, that you do you know, too. Basically. They don't know, so I just go, well, here, you got to do this if you want to learn that. Just learn right. those things, you know, and then they got to do it. But I, you know, you and then to it. see that, yeah. it's really more, it's more motivation than anything. And and hopefully, uh, for me, the, uh, from like when I go out to hear music, I still get inspired, and that's what I, how I learn. So I'm hoping I can do that for the younger people yeah. that they come. If they never hear me, I'm not interested in teaching. In other words, they have to go to the concerts. Yeah. That's the <laughs> yeah, real exactly. stuff. But but it's really yeah. I think I would just always teach. Right, mm -hmm. right. And improvisation, I do it. I think uh, again, teaching improvisation. Well, I'm ch I just try to remember how I did it, and I just give them the same things to work on. Even this free thing, they can't go to a free session, but I can do a free ensemble where for where we just play free for three. You know. And then we you talk about it. Then I can give them yeah. little points of departure, you know. And they understand it that way. And there's not that much in the schools like that. No. Not really. No. There's not at all. You know. And so, <laughs> but I think it's a big, huge chunk of history that 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 it's that is missing. But it's also music that really pulls people in when they do stop and listen. It's That's really, right. Because it goes to the core fast. You know? Well, there you got it. You said it. <laughs> I, no, I, I really believe that. And like a lot of times in a set, even for people I don't know, if it's not a jazz audience, sometimes it's just a regular, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the freer piece, they get it. They Yeah. Yeah. They can, as long, and, but they again, it, it goes back to, I've heard, you know, I hear free music I don't like. When I say I don't like it, it doesn't draw me in. Mm -hmm. And then, and so I go, well, I can't define why, but I can, identify certain things that I like, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, if people are involved and it hits home somewhere, it doesn't matter what, it's, what it is. As an improviser, you have to ha be a performer, you have to be a composer, you have to, you know, it's like that's all, all of a sudden, it's what we call it spontaneous composition. Right. You have to be everything. And there's not a whole lot of people that kept doing that, but the, but the ones that did, I mean, we could just get up and do it. There aren't that many people I would do that with, right. but there are some I would. And, um, and, and just recently I did get the Chamber of Music America grant this year. Yes, I did. It's a miracle. <laughs> well, no, I don't yeah. know. I, and I'm right. writing very little, but it was, I proposed to write it for Jerry Grinelli, the drummer that's on most of those. Excellent. He's, he's like, one of the, he's been doing this like me. I, we were in, he was in the West Coast and we met years ago, but we had he was already. He's uh, from San Francisco, right, Jerry? He's yeah, he, yeah, that's where he, and he's, he's now in Halifax. Yeah, he's you a know that? Yeah, yeah. 
And we're, we've been partnering. We have a duo. I sent you the duo, yep. right? Uh, in text. I've been using poetry a lot lately. Like, yeah. I think you do too. <laughs> no, I mean, in the last few years, it's like E. e. Cummings will just come popping out. That's I right. don't, I rarely, rarely write it, but I, I, but I memorize poetry. Oh, you memorize poetry. Yeah, You're not know. instantly poet, doing poetry. Only that Probably. sometimes, which is yeah, my solo piece, sometimes mm -hmm. was instant. That and that was a, a years ago, and I would be very shy to do that. But I would be improvising freely. But like we're singers, we have we we and and I'd be like, and so this came. I actually Gary Peacock was on that one gig. I remember it to this day, and I just started saying some, and then I later made a little solo piece out of it. Sometimes I wonder, you know, came up. So probably I could do it more, but I, there's so much beautiful poetry that I keep seeking yeah. and memorizing that it doesn't, it'll just pop out in, in certain situations. Anyway, this grant is for that, and, I, and, and it's, I'm, I'm calling it uh, Lines and Spaces for whatever my proposal was, because it's going to be, <laughs> and it's going to be a, a, a dream suite. I'm using um, dream poems. I'm using uh, Houston, Langston Hughes' uh, What Happens to a dream deferred, or and uh, and uh, um, uh, hold fast to dreams, where if dreams die, life is but a broken winged bird that cannot fly. I use both. I believe in. I believe if somebody truly is loves jazz and wants to do vocal jazz, that that both are very important. The standards, bebop. Uh, in other words, ornette swings. It's a bebop. It's free bop. But yeah. it's but it's like if you want to. I I'm, I'm my most I'm fueled by jazz as opposed to there's a lot of improvisation new music can pop but you can hear it and this doesn't necessarily no, ever swing from, and that's okay so I prefer to play with people who have who keep it in their repertoire who, who keep doing it yeah the because they get better and better yeah, at composition sure. you can't just do, you can't, everybody can play free mm -hmm. but the ones that you like it's almost you can't tell which what part is free and which part is is written. Right. That's right. That to me, that's because and then and then like agreeing, like when is it over? How do you get in? How do you get out? Brunelli calls it entrances and exits. All music is like that. Well, that's personal taste. It's trusting. It's from doing it a lot. You have to in the moment. You got to know. Is this did this go on too long? You don't even do it with your mind. You know, just is it time for a change? You know, should you take your horn out of your mouth? Yeah. <laughs> you know that. You know. So shall we let them clap now? <laughs> Whatever. You know, and that's in the moment, and you have to be with people that that understand that. Understand that. Yeah, for sure. And that's the that that's what I have for sure with several many people, but uh, certainly this latest with the yeah. and Jane. It's important to have those kindred spirits. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't. You know. Well. Again, there's young people coming up who just add to it. They add whatever they've been listening to it to, you know. And um, that's that's one reason too. It's nice to to move back to New York. Not that it's not happening anyplace else, but it happens more here. And since I've been back, I'm starting to get see what what the young people are doing, mm -hmm. and that's very exciting to me. Because I will, you know, I mean, you know, there's a tendency you, when you're over 60 to start saying, well, this is not happening anymore. But mm -hmm. it's not true. It's just, they're just different. And I'm, I'm interested. I want to know what they're adding to it, you know. And there's actually people who, who studied with us uh, at Cornish, Grinelli and I, and Priest, who live in New York, the younger players, and they're, they're doing it. Wow. You know, they started down at the Knitting Factory and stuff. Yeah. And they have their own bands, and they take what, what we were you know, influenced. I, we were influenced. They were influenced by us, yeah. and now they're doing their add their whatever their thing is. And it's and I'm I'm interested in, and it's good to be here to yeah. to, to peek out whenever yeah. I can. I want to know what that what's happening. Right. Do you feel you've received the recognition you deserve? Oh no. Not like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know something I'm going to tell no. you. That's a that's an interesting no. question. You could you have to ask some other people. And go, oh, how come you're not? Married? <laughs> you know that you at, at, at finally you know you reach a point where you you have to give that up and you have to go well how lucky I am because there's really a lot of people who know my work and that's a, so so that's recognition you know but what's more exciting is that they there's they hear something and it's for me it's like I could die tomorrow I'm, I don't would like not to but but all I care about is that I can do my music, and so far I can't. If, if I had more recognition, it might be a little easier. 
you know, I don't have major this and that. Nobody's like on my bandwagon. But that could happen. But if it does happen, it's going to be because of the music. You see, it's not going to... And, and I feel good about that. In other words, I really feel that my music has a bit of a life of its own. It all still, you know, it still comes from me. <laughs> but not all of it. I say that. But like sometimes I go, well, that's it. Because I'm just going to do it. I, I don't do anything else. Right. I don't make any calls. I'm not going to do, you know, I'm not going right. to make one more promo sheet up. I get help with that from other people too. But, and uh, still I think s stuff would happen. I get a, you know, because a lot through musicians that through the years. And um, the energy is out there without doing so things that you I don't mean, even know. No, it's just, <laughs> especially since I moved back again, you know, it's like, honestly, there's new, kindling of new collaboration, uh, old ones, new ones. Somebody will remember something that they hear in my music and, and some little project that comes up. So that says something. Yeah. I'm trying to be cool with that and not worry about money in it. You know right. I, mean? okay. I have so many projects. Kirk Neurock, he and I are doing, oh, but he writes music to poetry, a lot of Emily Dickinson. Oh, nice. Get him heard Kirk. We, we used to do a duo years ago. He's a great composer. I have, that's my thing, and that's probably, probably in retrospect, it's, it's, it's been hard for, I mean, you know, the powers that be, you know, nobody's terribly interested in marketing me, but if they could market me, it would be a little tricky, you know, because I have so many projects, but I love that, and that's what I, I finally came to terms with that. So I have to go from one to the, you know, that that's hard. Right, right. Except, now we go back to, what do you mean hard? Just shut up, stop, and then what happens is the one will co comes to the front. Like whoever right. the collaboration is, they was like, let's do such and such. So then that's what's up. That's what I'm learning how to do. Okay, yeah. How do I do that? Which, right now it's outskirts, which is the Jane Arrow, Bloom, and Jerry Bloom, because I got the grant. And I thought, I'm going to do something at the, at the Earshot Jazz Festival in November. That's I'm going to do uh, something at Peabody in Institute. Uh, Earshot is in Seattle. It's in Seattle, but you know, it, and I, I, when I first moved there, they were just starting at Earshot, which is a jazz organization. And now they have a wonderful festival yeah. every year, so I'm going to go do that. Okay. You know, but, but yeah, just the, the whole now we're back to jiggling about where you put your energy. Yeah. You know? So you're basically improvising your life as well. The whole the I'm principle of so. <laughs> that applies to everything. I'm afraid so, and it's get it's in and out. Yeah, right. It's a <laughs> it's a <neutral. laughs> in and out, exactly. It is. No, you are. It's like you when do you stop, it. and then it's the same. Entrance is an exit. It's I'm not kidding. It's yeah. the same, and in between you got to have a lot of space. 